So, this is the VR and 360 video. Um, I think it was appropriate to kind of, you know, put them together, considering uh, they both kind of have very similar um, receptacles of receiving lately. Um, and I think it really applies here at PodCamp because, um, you know, it's a very kind of accessible and new medium uh, that I think a lot of people are going to be interested in the coming days. So we have a lot of tools here. We have a lot of, a lot of fun toys here. I almost forgot. You know, so uh, this, we'll, we'll talk about like what these things are in a bit. But um, so uh, myself, uh, of course, uh, I've been using it with Sorgatron Media, kind of trying to get ahead on what the next maybe curve of video might be. Uh, so and that's why we have things like this uh, Rico Theta S. That is a pretty awesome, about $350 device, and been playing with some other stuff we can talk about here in a little bit. Uh, so we, and we'll talk a little bit about that too, but I want to get through introductions. So if you want to introduce yourself. All right, um, I'm Becky Torbachkin. I'm a game designer and a UX designer, and I do some writing as well, and um, I'm working on an indie game for VR that hopefully I will finish someday. You're the actual developer here. You're like, I mean, I'm a designer. I'm I just to don't work point with funny looking things at something and we get cool stuff <laughs> I, to happen. I move 3D things around and hope they compile. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Um, and did you mention the meetup? Group? Oh, yes, and we have a Pittsburgh VR meetup. And that's Thank how you. I met you, and, yes. and, and that was really cool, and I'm, I'm hoping I'm less busy so I can get to it again. Um, I put our friends looking for a group where we hosted the, uh, the actually the Friday night party this year. This yeah. year. That looked really fun. <laughs> it was, it was, like, and there's oh, a land party and, and there's a land party like getting started in the other room for overwatch and we're just like it was like this interesting two different worlds happening here if you haven't had a chance go check out looking for group and some great stuff and also with us uh christopher whitlatch i'm uh by day i work for the pittsburgh foundation so i'm very interested in how the um the uh VR and 360 video uh, is going to impact nonprofits. But by night, I play around um, with an immersive gaming company. So um, I'm, you know, that's why I'm really, really interested as well. So. Mm -hmm. and, and then we've done some projects uh, together and been discussing a lot of opportunities that, you know, obviously that these kinds of things kind of, uh, you know, kind of get you into. Let's talk about the accessibility to begin with. We have, like I said, a lot of kind of samples here on the table in front of us. Uh, like I said, I mentioned the Rico Theta S, you know, a good $350 camera that, that, that takes really great pictures and kind of okay 360 video, actually. Um, you can think of it as a less rugged GoPro of, 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 of things. Um, there was, we've also been playing with uh, the, Gear, um, the Gear 360, which just looks like a ball. <laughs> basically, and it mostly interfaces with Samsung phones, uh, and that's been had some really interesting results as well. But the really big thing, you know, obviously, like creators can do a lot of stuff, but the really the biggest thing is a few years ago when Google had a piece of cardboard underneath everybody's seat at Google I/O, and it was basically these things, and and this is just something that your phone goes into, and uh, there's actually the phone in that one over there. And it's just got some plastic lenses. You can actually, you can get plans online and get the materials for under 20 bucks and build this yourself. You know, maybe some Velcro on it to hold things together and everything. Um, and I, that was the first thing for me that said, oh, wait a minute. This is, and, and, and it's, you know, it's not, it's not the Oculus. It's not the big $1,500 headsets or anything like that. But it's like a nice entryway into like these immersive things that, that you can create, which leads to people picking up these things, people making other things, uh, people trying to um, um, reach out. Um, it, you know, for instance, this is uh, Katie uh, Dutters uh, uh, donated this for, for example. This is actually the promotion. Verizon was giving away these things, and this is a little, um, what was it, beat? BB-8. BB-8. Thank you. Wow. I just lost my nerd card on that one. Um, I'm sorry. I was watching Star Trek. You, this you don't have to worry. You're at pod camp. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> we all have the answer. There you go. Um, but anyways, uh, this uh, <laughs> but this is a giveaway. I mean, this is something that they could put out there, and you download an app with it, and there was, and I, and I, and I played with it. Like, there's little, these little video scenes that just immerse you into it. Uh, and 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 I like, I like to get in a little deeper on what that is with you, Chris. 
Um, but that's another sample that a nonprofit put together. Yes, this was, um, this was put together as a campaign by uh, Planned Parenthood. And um, what it is meant to do is give you um, an immersive experience of what it's like to um, uh, go drive through the protest line on the way to a clinic. Um, for a nonprofit, I think it you know, helps them tell their story in an immersive way that, that allows you to have more of an experience and in which case maybe a little bit more empathy and, and that's what VR and 360 video can do. Right, right, and that's, and that's kind of like as a video producer, that's kind of what we're you know, kind of thinking about for there. And of course, on the step up from there is this wonderful gadget, uh, which if you are an Android Samsung user, which is kind of becoming the next iPhone in my mind, uh, a lot of the new ones in the last, I'd say probably three years, are compatible to these um, uh, Samsung Gear VR headsets. Uh, and it's it's really just kind of like a higher end Google Cardboard in the long <laughs> run, right? Yeah. And it's using Oculus technology, which is similar to, you know, uh, you know pretty much just kind of boiled down from what those, those big headsets are. And it interfaces in there, does the right thing, and there are VR games, it's got a little touch pad on the side. Uh, this is actually the SDK unit that my friend uh, uh, thankfully gifted me when he uh, upgraded his, because uh, he's got some really cool connections. But, um, but, but it's enough to get in there, and we were all playing like the suicide promotional game that was, <laughs> yeah. was on there and all, like shooting those weird mutant things from the movie huh. or whatever the heck they were. Uh, and, 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 and again, a better way, you know, higher resolution, a little better than this, but still not as great as, you know, that big $600 headset that requires a $1,500 PC, you know, but, but still just a better experience and just more accessible for, you know, hopefully you already have this phone, right? Or, or well, it's a reason for me to get a Samsung phone. <laughs> and then this is, I, I think this retails for $100 That's now. $99, I think. $99, mm -hmm. yeah. but there's like, like I know, I know my and that, friend. that came down like $100 within like six months. Right. You know, at Christmas well, I think it was like one ninety nine. The retail uh, was ninety nine, and I think the SDK was one ninety nine beforehand. Okay. So, um, and and they've been like giving this away if you buy a phone on certain carriers yeah. and stuff, or you buy two Samsung phones, and yeah. we'll give you a Gear <laughs> Gear VR headset. Um, you can find it on eBay for fifty bucks. You know, mm -hmm. um, that that's not the hard part. And even um, just to kind of a step forward, Google actually has a platform coming out where they're gonna do a headset like this, I believe. You might know a little bit more about this than I do. Well, I'm, I'm all in <laughs> uh, but it, it looks like, I think they're calling it uh, Dreamwave, I think yeah. they're calling it, which is weird, that's the old HTML editor in <laughs> Acro Media. But um, and it's a standard, and it's gonna be mostly for newer, higher def phones to have higher, even higher quality than what this does. Uh, and it, I think it will be also compatible with like the iPhone and a lot of the newer Android phones. It's gonna, I think it's slated for this fall. Again, taking this concept and growing it a little bit. Uh, so, you know, we already have the hardware, like that can be a good starting point and they're just wrapping around a little bit of assistive technology to, to get you into it. And the, the gaming experience goes up a notch uh, from this to that as well. Right, because there are games just for cardboard as mm -hmm. well, but I mean, they're very simple, you know, you look around and maybe, maybe there's actually a, a button on there that interfaces, and I think it's using NFC, perhaps? Yeah, like the, the magnet. Button. Yeah, there's a little yeah. magnet and detects, mm -hmm. and so you do have like a button that you can like select, like kind of turn your head and, and point at something, like a menu item, mm -hmm. or, or, or shoot a gun at something. Right. Um, so it's, it's really cool. But then this one with the little touchpad is sort of like a nice little step up in that you get mm -hmm. a little bit more interaction right. options there. Right, and you can also uh, buy a gamepad that yeah. will yeah. That, that I bought like the little chintzy like fifteen dollar one that had like all <laughs> Japanese writing on it, uh, and Bluetooth it to it, and and that like stepped up you know the gameplay a little bit too, mm -hmm. and nothing again nothing immersive. It's not like you're playing Doom on this thing as far as like running around doing stuff. Like everything's pretty um, locked down. You know. I think that's important though. Um, you know the games that move I've, I've found are very. Uh, disorienting for me um, because mm -hmm. my body wants to keep walking around the room as, as, as I'm doing it on the screen but with 360 and uh, um, the Suicide Squad game that we played this morning um, you are rooted in one place and you're just spinning uh, on that that kind of uh, uh, 
foundation, I guess. You know? Yeah, I, I haven't that's encountered far less disorienting. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> encountered a, a game that like you actually flew or walked or ran or whatever around that wasn't making most people sick. I mean, there are a lot of games that use other tactics like to teleport and stuff like that mm -hmm. and jump from place to place, and that that is usually better. And you could probably do that with this, but then that's even weirder because I feel like you are more like in the room, your mind is more in the room that you're <laughs> I kept like right before this, keep thinking like, why isn't Katie there? Like, why don't I see her over here? I know she's over there. <laughs> Well, the best was I was at a Replay FX a couple weeks ago, and they're showing off a pinball game, where it was cool because it looks like you're looking over the pinball machine, and it kind of felt right, and they had a game pad to simulate the flippers and everything. And he's telling me about it, and I'm like, this is really cool. And I kept kind of like, oh, yeah, this is over here. And I took the headset off. And it was this. It was a Gear VR that they had. Uh, and, he, and he was gone. And I was <laughs> Oh, where did he go? Like, I didn't see him. I, I have no idea where he went. You're talking to him? Yeah, yeah. I was, like, talking to him for, like, five I minutes, I thought. Stuff, you know, and he was responding to me, at least for a little bit of it. At least I think he was. <laughs> but, you know, it's again, you, know, you really are kind of immersed in that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, in, um, in my talks, I try to figure out how to tell this to people that can't try it. And I have a GIF of, like, a little girl that's using it. And she tries to take the controllers from the Vive and put them on the table. The table is a virtual table. It's not there. And she just wipes out. <laughs> I always feel really bad like showing this little girl like fall over on the floor. But it, like, it does sort of prove the point that like, the items feel real and you're really disconnected from where you are. Yeah, that's uh, actually, I, I almost took a, took, a, took a fall when I was doing the <laughs> HTC Vive. If yeah. you're not familiar, there's the Oculus, which is, I think it can be described as you know, very similar to this. It's hooked up to a computer. And I think it's a six hundred dollar headset, right? And then, yeah. but again, they say you need like a fifteen hundred dollar gaming PC to run this stuff appropriately. Ultimately, and, you need basically like a brand new yeah, graphics card. Yeah. So if you just bought your computer and you're a gamer, you're probably you okay, okay. But otherwise, yeah, yeah. you probably need to upgrade. But it's a little, it's a little intimidating. Like, it is. I need it's like, a big like, deal. like two thousand bucks to get this thing going, yeah. you know? But at least, uh, at least, and it's more of a sit down experience, maybe mm -hmm. gamepad, mouse kind of thing. Vive is you have, and, and Oculus is going to have this soon as well, but they came with two controllers that if the game you know, has the mechanism, you see your hands. It moves mm -hmm. where you think your hand is mm -hmm. in your vision. Uh, and they also have these cameras that tell where you are and kind of build like a virtual wall that will come up. So you do walk around. And I'm playing Office Simulator. I recommend it if you have a chance to get a get, get on a Vive. Uh, looking for Group has one, and it's tremendous. Um, but yeah, it's like oh, go, go. You have to pick this thing up, on, and you're just like in an office. Is and it job, like, job Simulator? Job Where Simulator. Job I'm yeah. sorry. No, no I, I played the Office one. My friend played right. the convenience store version like of it. Of <laughs> um, but no, like it was like pick this CD up off the floor and put it in the computer. And, and I and I went down to one knee to pick it up with my Vive controller, and then I almost put my hand on the desk. That didn't exist, <laughs> and I'm like, no, oh, 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 no, 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 no. It does That's not really there. Let's get up, you yes. know. But again, it's that kind of like, it's real enough. And it's a very cartoony game too. Mm -hmm. Like you I, have think that, I think a lot of them are at this point because yeah. we're just in kind of like a first generation of development that mm -hmm. you know yeah. you can't push it too far. And if you did, you know, if you're at the like Ready Player One status yeah. of of our dreams, uh, too quickly, I think you know. I mean, when you were talking you, you'd about... You'd scare people yes. at this point. <laughs> when you were talking about getting disoriented, right? Like, uh, there are a lot of uh, concerns of making people sick while they're in-game, and one of the things that can make people sick is if the performance lags. So mm -hmm. if you have these cartoony graphics that are kind of simple and not too intensive on your graphics card, then you can more easily make sure that your performance is, like, on point and that that's not going to be the cause of that nausea. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's a big incentive to kind of, like not go too realistic but there there are a few but like there are also a lot of them that make you sick so. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's also important to note that like like things like this or even this are kind of underpowered to get that kind of sync right and it's yeah. just like milliseconds tiny little bits right but it's enough that your brain has a disconnect uh, Leo Laporte always describes this on, um, um, on, on the Twit Network as it, it basically triggers that thing in your head that's kind of like, oh, this doesn't match what I'm seeing from what I'm feeling, 
so I must be on LSD and I need to vomit. <laughs> was was what he describes, and I didn't think somebody had explained it to him. Like that was like somebody that was really big and you know a real big developer of this kind of stuff. Um, I've, but, been, I've been inside ones where I was schizophrenic, where where part of my brain had, had <laughs> definitely checked into that virtual world, and the other part of my brain go, goes, "You're standing in a coffee shop right now, and there are chairs around you, and if you move, you're going to bump into the chairs. So yeah. don't move." You know, right? right. Well, there was a, a, a Katie you, when she first uh, tried this thing was we were doing the awesome cast so she's in the studio and on the couch and there's chilla right right there beside him and he's like she, she's like looking back here and stuff and like basically like look awkwardly looking at him the entire time because we just had her play stuff while we were doing the podcast you know and it, it, it just it was just fantastic to watch and like i've almost what's that yeah yeah she uncomfortably close to to him and everything and and you almost want to like, like reach out and you poke somebody next to you or something like that, right? <laughs> you know, that kind of situation. You don't so. realize you're staring at them. Exactly, but you exactly. Um, or they walk away and you're like, who am I talking to? <laughs> but I, it, the, the biggest thing I've noticed with that was um, there's a temple run um, on here. Where it was first person, you're just going straight and it weaves and stuff. And that was the first game where I'm like, oh, well, yep, I'm sick. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like the worst. Yeah. Oh, no, it's, if you're just like, well, how bad can this get? Go download Temple Run if you have the Gear VR, and, and I'm sure there's probably like a cardboard version of it as well. So no, there's a percentage of people that don't get sick at all ever, for whatever reason. Is that connected with like the people with the problems with 3D movies? Like I can't go to I a 3D know. movie with I, my wife I can't because I see 3D movies because I'm sort of partially blind in this eye. Okay. but I can still see on the. I can actually not see the cardboard ones, but I can see everything up from mm. that. Um, and I and I can't see 3D movies, but I I, I get motion sick on everything, <laughs> real life and virtual. But my husband doesn't get motion sick much at all. But he's been more more sick in VR than I have. So, so I don't a, know if it's connected. I mean, I think um, so. One of the things when you're talking about the, the feeling like you're on drugs or something, um, I know one explanation that I've heard, and I think they really don't know what causes it. So they're all kind of theories. Um, is that like uh, that there are stuff that you would eat that was poisonous, that for some people, when they would feel that feeling, they would throw up. And so it, it activates that part of your brain. It poisons huh. like the vestibular <laughs> system, basically. Yeah. And so some, I guess some, they think some people are evolved to have that trait where you eject the poison, <laughs> but that not everyone is. And so maybe some people just would have just eaten the poison and been fine. <laughs> or not fine, but uh, yeah. And so like um, the, the lead, Oh God! I can't. John Carmack um, mm -hmm. is notoriously he doesn't get any motion sickness at all, so everything seems fine to and, him. And that's, that's <laughs> the lead. He, he's yes. the lead program guy between like Doom and Quake and and, and, and it's now software. at Oculus. And now yeah. at Oculus, uh, I think he builds rockets in his spare time. Right. I think last I knew. Uh, but yeah, it, like and this is a guy that like went on off a, a thing. He's just like, I want to see if I can put Doom on the iPhone, like back on like the 3G, you know. And he's like, now I'm working on virtual reality. Like he's kind of the, like like yeah. like the guy I look to. Was like, okay, what's next in gaming, right? Yeah. So. He's he's really great. And if you have the opportunity to like see him talk, he's kind of rambly, but it's also super entertaining. He just <laughs> really says the best stuff. So he'll be talking at the Oculus like developer conference that's coming up and they, they finally lengthened his talk to 90 minutes because he never keeps it to an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sounds right. So um, going along those lines, so a lot of the programmers are moving over to, to virtual reality um, that were talented in other areas. Um, is it accessible for other programmers to program for uh, VR at this point? Um, I think, you know, it is and it isn't. Like, a lot of game developers are already working in 3D, um, and so a lot of the skills and techniques and stuff in terms of, like, just to be able to create content are already there. You know, if you're making an RPG or something like that, you're already like that. You're already making a, a 3D world with avatars and graphics in it. Um, but at the same time, like, the, the design of them needs to change, so, like, the you know, the, the UI patterns and the UX patterns that are that we're used to using or the game mechanics that we're used to using, like running around and shooting stuff, aren't necessarily good. And so I think um, it, it's, e it's not a big jump if you're already making and shipping games to be like kind of switching over to that. Um, but it is sort of hard to figure out what to make necessarily and what's a good experience. Um, and then I think you know it's still time consuming. Like I mean, game game development is always pretty pretty intensive. Um, but I mean, one of the biggest criticisms I've heard of, of a lot of the big games that are out there right now are that they're two hours long. 
right? They're like $50, like just like Fallout 4, which I spent probably 200 hours playing, right? <laughs> and then, you know, if you get uh, a, one of the different RPGs and stuff like that, they might be anywhere from an hour to two hours, and you're like, this was the same price, right? Mm -hmm. So as much as, and, and a lot of um, users are even sensitive that, to that. You can read in the reviews and see people talking about like, you know, I understand this is a new medium and we need to help like support it, but like, come on guys, <laughs> this is $50. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and it's also like like everything, and I maybe mean, you know, I played just a little bit on the on the on the bigger headsets and a lot on this because it really feels like an app store and games are like ten bucks on here, right? Uh, or there's a right. summer sale and I just clean up on that, you yes. know. Uh, but uh, but still, it seems like the experiences are these little bite sized Like you play, yeah. um, oh, the Gun Jack was one that I've been playing, and and it's in this Eve Eve universe, which you know there's a, a version of it called Val Valkyrie that they're showing off. I just woke up, Siri. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, there's a version that, that, like, the PlayStation VR that's supposed to be coming out has been, uh, you know, showing off, right? And this is basically just, you're a gunner on the side of a ship, and there's stuff you shoot at, you know? It's kind of like, just kind of, it feels like you have a segment of a game or a boiled-down version of the game that right. I really kind of, it reminds me of when the Wii came out. And it's like, well, everything feels like a mini game. Like demoware. Yeah, like demoware. Like, like we're still, no, Siri, Siri, you have no opinion on this. Go away. <laughs> um, yeah. But, but, but yeah, it, but it's also like we're introducing people to these concepts that are the new mechanics. Mm -hmm. and, and we don't know how to make you want to sit down and play it for three hours like right. we did grant that thought of. Right. And, I mean, some of that is sort of how you package the product too like there's there's sort of the design of the product as well as how you present it to people so like some of the some of them are doing better than others like i think forgotten realms is the one with sort of rpg like um and it's kind of i think in a lot of ways that's the thing that like everybody wants is they want to mm -hmm. go and like go in a castle and fight skeletons people want to disappear right? for two hours yeah. but is that realistic um, like and your they, face starts sweating in these it's things true yeah <laughs> and so they have like one level um but i'm pretty sure that it's it's like uh, early access or like beta, right? Mm -hmm. So when you when you get it, you're not like shocked that it's as as shocked as one level because they never said it was done, right? Compared to if you say like, here's our complete game we've been working on for two years and it's two hours. <laughs> I feel like the iPhone kind of did this too because I remember mm -hmm. when it was a big deal when Infinity Blade came out because it was the first game that was like, hey, we're doing the Unreal Engine, which is like, I mean, if you boot up about any game on an Xbox or a PlayStation, like you see the Unreal logo. Like, like it's like like seventy percent of the games it feels like, um, or at least the ones I buy because yeah. it's always those types of games. But but it's a standard, and now we're building it for this little thing in our pocket. You know, uh, five years ago when that was really impressive, and uh, and it's felt like well, this isn't Unreal. This is weird, swipey, fighty game, right? Yeah. But but again, it's also building for this mechanic of. You know the swipey thing, and now we have Pokemon, and it's a whole different world. Um, side note, that maybe slightly goes along with this because I was a Google Glass user. If Pokemon Go was on Google Glass, we'd still be using it, <laughs> right? I, I think you're right? right. I think you're right. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> you do, could you imagine if those crossed over? Yeah. But. So I think you know the other thing to to think about with this is that so we've talked about gaming as being you know sitting down, still more of a console experience. Um, but a lot of this technology is actually going out and in, into location-based playing games. And again, it's $50 and it's yeah. maybe only an hour, but you're up, you're playing with a team. Um, there's been, there's a couple examples I'd bring to mind in New York City for the, the release of Ghostbusters. Um, they, had, uh, they had basically mapped a, a warehouse and you went into the warehouse and you actually were busting ghosts just like you would you know, in the movie, so you're actually playing the story. Um, Universal for their Halloween nights this year, uh, one of the haunted houses for on the VIP experience, you will be wearing a headset and things will be materializing uh, cool. based on, on how it's mapped. There are roller coasters. Room. There are yeah. roller coasters where you, you wear yeah. it. And I think yeah. they are Samsung Gears. Yeah. You're already on a roller coaster <laughs> outside <laughs> and you have to dive into a virtual world, like, like the real world of driving a roller coaster well, that's been isn't done. real enough. It, is it, is it that, but that's been done. I mean, that's, what, that's where VR started, right? It was in the yeah. simulators where right. you actually got into the simulator and it moved. Uh, the Back to the Future one where you're rocking exactly. back and forth and there's uh, a giant screen. Which yeah. some 
some made you sick too. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, body yeah. wars at Disney World made yeah. me really sick. I mean, between um, the, the heyday of like explosion of like 80s and 90s of VR stuff and this kind of new explosion, that's sort of where it still survived is in the theme parks and Disney in particular. And, yeah. and there were a lot you of know, like it really show enhances games that story. That stuff, yeah. I think you know, you can <laughs> play in you can play any story, you can play in any world, you can have any experience you want, any fantasy you want. Or you can have a nicer living room while you watch Netflix. Yeah. That you can do. <laughs> Which is actually really, what I don't care about, but I don't want to watch Criminal Minds that my wife wants to. I'm just like, well, I want to watch BoJack Horseman or whatever, but you on know? on the downside, you can't read your phone at the same time. <laughs> yeah, that's like, oh, I can only do one thing. I, uh, to, I can look at this plot of plan over here. And yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's, I think that's interesting. I, I know there's been, um, and this is going to become a social thing, too. I have not gone into them, but there's a couple of, like, like social VR apps on there and I've installed but I just like I don't think I'm ready for this yet. <laughs> you know every time I'm like I, I I don't think I'm ready for that um, and but that's kind of a you know you think second life you know how big that was and and, mm -hmm. and you know uh, we've there's the HoloLens demo where they put like the person in the room with you and you see it through through that concept which you um, for those not unfamiliar HoloLens is Microsoft's headset which really isn't virtual reality it's more augmented reality as in you know i could you know i could look out and and you know see virtual people in the seats and it looks like they're kind of there or or there was like some kind of gun game where your arm turns into a mega man hand cannon and there's stuff flying around right um the great demos but i'm kind of curious how they're going to work out in, in, in I, I think i think augmented reality is a big part of this too and i think it's going to drive it yeah um because of Pokemon Go. I There's mean. a camera. There's a camera on this side, and I think there might be an app or two that, that may take advantage of that. But you gotta think, like, as it is, like you can look through and there's a camera and they can lay stuff on top of whatever that camera's doing. I think that's really that could be really interesting and could uh, make this do a little bit more than even what uh, the the Oculus and the Vive could be doing. And mm -hmm. the Vive has a camera, but that's more just to see your hands. And I you're believe. not going to leave so. the room without it. So. <laughs> right, right. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know about like walking down the street with this thing. I don't know if that's going to be too great. But like, like you're in a room for, and there's a there's a Pikachu over there. You know what I mean? For mm -hmm. museums and tourism and stuff like that. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of stuff. Um, I know at at I was at one conference where there was some a speaker that's like a museum designer, and he was really excited about the potential for, you know, integrating either VR experiences inside museums so that you could go places in the museum that you couldn't normally get to, like, you know, Babylon or something, right? Or to be able to walk around the museum and see, you know, the information instead of having to, like, listen to those geeky little headsets <laughs> or, like, awkwardly stand there while you slowly read the tag and someone else is like, I want to read the tag. And they're slowly <laughs> bumping you out of the way. You could read it at your leisure. <laughs> Stand there, there's a virtual, you know, uh, uh, right. Civil War soldier standing the next to the thing telling you about the, yeah. you know, like an actor that just pops up or a CG of it or something. And he can talk at the speed that's right for you in the language that's right for you right. and someone else could hear a different language. Right, right. It's just yeah. a whole different level and layer of experience. Or you can do like this one fellow did where he's got tired of uh, riding on his stationary bike every day. <laughs> so he took the Gear VR and developed a thing with Street View that put it into a 3D <laughs> mapping. So as he's as he's biking, he's going down the road with Street View built out of uh, the the you know the the topography and pictures from Street View that mostly work. Uh, so he could bike from one end of the UK to the other, cool. like and see it as he goes and and do that like real time. No, oh, does it inter does it Make him sick if he's pedaling. <laughs> I, that, that's a good, good, good question. But I think psychologically, um, you know, that, that's been shown to uh, you, you bike harder, you bike yeah. longer, um, because your, your, your brain is actually being entertained at that point. You know, it's actually in, in the activity that you're doing rather than sitting there going, I'm sitting here pedaling a bike. You walk further to unlock that pokey egg. Yep. Uh, that you do. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, it's like, you, you, like I'm doing more than just walking to walk, you know? Uh, and, and I think that's, that's pretty cool. And I think that, I, I mean, Pokemon's a, a prime example of that. It got people up, it got people active, it got people doing things, but it also got people learning history. Mm -hmm. which, mm -hmm. is, which they, I don't know if they even realize that they're doing it. <laughs> Every time they're hitting a Pokestop, in, in many cases, they're getting a piece Something of history. And we're turning into another, another thing with point. this, but I, I don't know how many things down here 
like, oh, there's a mural over there. Yeah, well, that's I went back to my Shoot. hometown yeah. um, of Uniontown, and I wanted to play Pokemon, and, and I was like, I didn't know we had a memorial to, you know. There's like it's, some. You know, there's some <laughs> I didn't like, know this happened here. Over on Boulevard of the Alleys by the there. garage, there's, there's some like electric company clock building. Uh, <laughs> I, I went to the art institute in like 2000 and walked by it like every day for how long? I never knew that was there. It's, it's, it's you know incredible. that's that's the beauty that augmented reality can can do yeah. for you and and you know you add a, another layer with with VR mm -hmm. on top of that. So you know? uh, we talked a bit about the development of VR and stuff. I kind of roll back a little bit on like kind of 360 and the accessibility on that as well because I mean it's it's I mean it's related but it's it's a different kind of storytelling. Uh, my first experience with it that really kind of captured my imagination was um, no, New York Times had has a uh, VR app, and so is Discovery, and there's the Riot app, and everything like that. And the first one I watched was back when like there was everybody in the election, like when there was like six people on both sides, or whatever the case was, right? And they would take you know something similar to this, and they put it on a tripod, and actually put it in the crowd amongst the people. So there you got. I don't know, Trump or Bernie or Ted Cruz or whatever, and you have a little bit of a voiceover uh, talking about like how they're speaking and how the people are reacting, and you get to look around at the person beside you, you know, and you really got to feel like, oh, this is why, you know, you, know you, you see whatever on TV and you think, oh, that person's whatever, and, and I don't get why people are behind that, but you're looking and you kind of get the little bit of a feeling of the vibe, mm -hmm. right? Um, or the guy that did, I think it was a New York Times cover where it was a giant picture they put on um, on on the sidewalk on that one building that's like kind of you know kind of looks like a Wood Street Station where it's kind of cornered in, and and talked about how they set that up and how and they hung you over outside the helicopter when he took the picture and everything you know so you know, being agoraphobic that was really interesting. <laughs> um, but uh, but again, like kind of that interesting storytelling side of things, and we've been playing with some really interesting things with this since. And I think 360 is moving further along as far as storytelling because it's it's far more accessible. Facebook um, was than, a big part than of it, and Facebook has been a big part of it. Absolutely, and you should definitely talk about that. But uh, my first experience with 360 was um, I was plopped down um, in the middle of Aleppo uh, in Syria, which has been bombed. Out, damaged and I was standing there and I was controlling the movement of the camera uh, that's you know the beauty of 360 and there was day-to-day -day life going on uh, as you heard gunshots in the background and it really puts you into that that scene and, and, and gave you that that experience I think you know what we used it for uh, Mike you and I um, we we had a rally in Westmoreland County where we put it down in the middle and we could have just filmed the speaker speaking and you could have gotten the message, but by putting it down in the middle, you saw people's reactions, you saw the cheers, the claps, you saw where they were um, you know, engaged and why yes, they were engaged, signs, and uh, the type of yeah. people that were there. Um, yeah. So it really puts you at the scene um, almost at the time, even if it's not live. And that's important that it captures something that the, you know, a regular camera wouldn't capture, right? It, just watching us, right? It's right. like a, an okay experience to watch in 2D, but 3D. You, you get this. You get the full, ex, full surround experience, yeah. right? Uh, we've been using it since. Of course, pictures obviously have been really big things. I took it to the gathering of the Juggalos to get some experiences. <laughs> um, getting right up front with Green Jello in their punk rock puppet show in a <laughs> in the smallest stage in the vent in the place at three in the morning. Uh, it, it was pretty fantastic, and he's right there flipping off my, uh, my, my this camera. Uh, and so, it, so you yeah. were there in the moment, but I actually was in the moment. I didn't go. I was at home. Yeah. But I, you know, I was watching it. Yeah. We, I, you know, I, after you posted it, I was watching it, and I felt like I was there mm -hmm. as well, even and, though it was, <laughs> you know, your experience. Uh, between that and we've been taking some pictures um, with the Hell on Hills five, Hell on Hills five K. Uh, in Beachview, and the big thing is we're, you know, it's being targeted as the world's steepest 5K. And uh, so we've been taking pictures of the hills, so we've had fun with that, where we're like, we, if you look on at uh, Boosted when we talked about that, we actually, they, they've been doing awesome things with Facebook Live to reveal the hills as we go, because the course isn't, isn't revealed yet, you know. You don't know which of those many horrible hills over in that neighborhood <laughs> you're going up. In, uh, Maybe that's for the uh, 
And uh, so you look and there's the lineup of the people, including the people that were avid runners that never seen the hill before that we blindfolded and trying to make it not look like a kidnapping. And, uh, <laughs> and so like, they're, I'm, like, I'm like, just pose. So you just see them on the street and then you turn around and look up the hill <laughs> when, you, when you're on it. So, you know, having some fun with that. You can play with that a little bit. Um, another one that, the other early one that caught my attention was Gary Vaynerchuk. Of course. Um, so he does ask Gary V, and he had somebody come in and do a 361. And he's doing, he's at a table, and he's like answering the questions, they're talking to the camera and everything. And then he tosses, hey, somebody ask a question. And the guy's sitting over here, and his Twitter pops up over his head. And it's like, okay, you know, so there's that connection there, or maybe this guy's a guest, and he, he answers the question. We well, don't realize it, maybe not right away, but there's another Gary V sitting in a chair over here. Playing on his phone. This is a 20 minute video, right? And you could go see it on, on, on YouTube too. And so he's over there playing on his phone. And then finally, like the last question, he's like, I think you should take this one. And he pops his head up and answers the question. <laughs> you know? And like they, they shot him or they looped him. I don't, I'm not entirely sure. I haven't I mean, paid that, that much that's attention. Some, that's some heavy stitching in the <laughs> editing. To get but I mean, that. Like, that's like, like, oh no, we can have some fun with this. Yeah. You know, I mean, not not as big of an in depth experience of making a VR, you know, world or something like that. But it's just like, you know, we can create something with this thing. You know, manipulate this flat plane and then wrap it around you. You know, and I've been, yeah, I've been really been investigating like what those tools are and what can we do with something like that. So, and that's been a really really fun process so far. And uh, as far as we should talk about Facebook, of course, yes. I, I think it's been really big about introducing those kinds of things because, again, it is, I'm still having trouble putting things in YouTube, to be quite honest. Um, I'm still, like, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and, and, and that's just, you know, we have to work with this metadata and everything like that. But Facebook, it's the easiest thing, and it's the thing that I know people are going to see because mm -hmm. it's the thing that's going to pop up in your feed, and it's native, and they're getting really behind it. And, uh, and, and people react to that thing. Every time I put it up for, for the project that we did, uh, for Hell on Hills, for we did actually went in and shot the, the studios for KDKA, um, it's been just, just people have been reacting to that and they're not using any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. They're using this. And yeah, you can watch it right on your phone and you get this, the same experience. And even um, these apps like the the Riot, um, which which has some of the videos, I think maybe even the one you might have been talking yeah, about. Yeah, they too. have the Aleppo video like, on Riot. Like they you, created that one. You can just hold this in front of you and look around and let it be kind of the window into whatever that experience is. So like that again lowers the accessibility. Mm -hmm. You know, that now more people can can do this. So if you have something like these guys, you can go to watch that video with, with your phone right now. You don't have to build a cardboard for the whole 20 bucks. Uh, the, the, the cardboard kind of, I think, you know, psychologically pulls you in to where that's the only thing you're focusing right. on. Whereas the phone, it's you're still in reality, right. so to speak. It feels like a but, way to go. But it is a very immersive experience. I mean, you're swimming with dolphins, you're riding a roller coaster, you're, uh, um, oh, you're in the cockpit of a plane. That was mm -hmm. one I watched earlier. Um, well, you're on a roller amazing coaster. Amazing experience. You're, you're in here. You're in here. Look at the roller coaster. <laughs> yeah. you know, the the roller like... coaster sounds like I might want that to be a little further away from reality. Well, <laughs> yeah. you know, he was. I think he was. He was filming. I was going whoa. <laughs> so I was actually feeling like I was actually on that roller coaster. Nice. Mm -hmm. so. And that was just on. That was just on the cardboard. And I have like a, just the iPhone 5s in there. So that's even like the smaller window. Like it, make, it makes your 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 window just like kind of thin like this because the screen's so small and it's you know overlapping everything. Um, so, you say there's a lot of options for that, and I think I think the people, you know, much like we started getting into audio podcasting ten years ago because it became accessible, and now video is so much. You know, I mean, I mean, geez, people were filming. You know, I got all that equipment back there, and people are filming with iPhones and a, and a Rode microphone this weekend. You know, uh, I think this is like kind of hitting that nexus point, um, and even like discussions have been, when do our phones get it? You know, uh, the phones have experimented. There's been versions with the 3D video, 3D pictures. You know, I think HTC mm -hmm. put some out. You know, when do we get something that has, you know, whatever this function is going to be? That I can't imagine the case on that thing <laughs> to protect that lens. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah, but because I'll need that because I'll drop the thing. I, th I think <laughs> I think GoPro is is pushing this market too. Right. Um, Absolutely. Because uh, they've, they've brought out, you know, specialty rigs for 360 video and VR um, that are 
you know, a little bit more expensive because mm -hmm. um, you're talking about, you know, theirs was ten like, cameras rather than one camera. Yeah, but because um, theirs was tying a bunch of GoPros together, and then it was like fifteen hundred dollars for just the rig. But the rig also came with their special stitching software, which was taking all the images and putting them together into one thing. They've they've condensed that now down to a a product. Um, oh, I haven't have, seen that. Yeah, they've they've just announced that they've condensed that rig down into one product with the lenses so you don't have to put camera after camera in And there's higher end professional things. Mm -hmm. I was looking at the monstrosity that the WWE has been using. <laughs> um, it looks like an alien. Uh, there's a, there was a, about a $3,500 prosumer model. So just like the, ch the cameras that I use, they're like about $3,000 cameras. I was like, okay, that's the budget that like is for me, a, 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 you know, a small video producer that's doing real stuff for companies, foundations, and everything like that. And then there's the $60,000 one that Alex Lindsay has that took them <laughs> like a couple of days to process. Uh, it's like, so... I don't think everybody's doing that, but uh, even there's like NASCAR's playing with this. NASCAR has one, and they're, they're showing us this uh, when I was talking to the guys at KDKA because of you know, CPS, but uh, like that follows the cars mm -hmm. in the 360 and, and again is putting that information and embedding it and, and making it part of the experience. So just some really interesting, uh, interesting applications there. So it's just kind of the beginning of this. Uh, I think but I think cool. I think that's the good part that this is the beginning of this. So yeah. any anybody out there, um, you know, don't don't feel like you can't try. Um, uh, you know, things are things are not so professional at this point that you know it drives you out of the market. Any right. good idea is right. a good idea. And this. it's a really like welcoming, exciting time. Like mm -hmm. I think a lot of people mm -hmm. are just really just super jazzed to be even can doing you, it. Can you toss me that one with all the marker on it? I have to show that off to the camera real quick. And I have to tell the story around about on this really quick. And as far as accessibility, like there is a 360 thing that you can do just with your one iPhone now. So these are my friends at Splash in Germany. Um, you can download the app. I, it's iPhone, at least for now. I don't, I don't know if they have an Android version yet. It's been getting better. But the whole idea is it's kind of like when you take, you used to take a panorama and you take multiple pictures and you stitch them together. You're taking the 360 of pictures and they have this interesting video, like, like this square. If there's like somebody dancing right here in the middle, like you can like take a video of that and you look around and post it as like a, you know, the, the, the 360 thing on Facebook and everything. Um, and again, it's an accessible thing. Now, now the, the, the fun part was uh, I had been talking with them about stuff, and I think we interviewed them too. So they sent me a self-made Google Cardboard that they decorated with marker. <laughs> it says, Michael, uh, love from Splash in Berlin. Uh, so that was kind of a fun thing. And it's like, this is the standard. Like, this is the Google Cardboard, like the Google Cardboard that they handed out and you can get from Google itself. It's all it is. But I just love, and there was like this this wonderful handwritten note that looks like a, a ransom letter, uh, and 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 it just I just I just appreciated it, and I have to give them a shout out for that. Stay wet is their thing since so it's a splash. They have so, a I mean, I mean that that is incredibly creative use of, of yeah. just the basic cardboard, and then you step yeah. up to something like this that's an actual promotional campaign, right? Or the BB-8 that you have over there. Um, but this even having them printed is not. Very expensive these no, days. No, no, especially know, it's if you're like doing printing anything else, basically. And actually, it was funny because we were playing with that one, and there's a there's a QR code at the bottom. I was like, I wonder what this goes to, and it goes to the website that made it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and it was supposed to go to the app. I, I wonder if the nonprofit realizes that that QR code is on there and going to the <laughs> uh, to their supplier and not to them. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they got a discount. <laughs> but Maybe. but even that, I mean, it's, a, it's a great introduction to that. So. Um, I guess um, just for closing remarks, um, what uh, what do you think is next? Like, not the oh, yeah, everybody's going to be into this stuff in like five years or something. But what do you think is going to be the next kind of step forward in either the three hundred and sixty or VR or accessibility space? That's a good question. The next game you're working on? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I think uh, what I'm excited about personally is, I mean, for games to get longer and sort of deeper and richer. Um, and I'm also excited about the social stuff, so potential for social and like the, I'm, I'm really hoping there's room for like innovation in terms of how we interact as people in social spaces, because I think um, it starts to push issues like harassment and personal space and 
and how do we structure communities into all kinds of interesting things. I'm sorry, did you hear about the, I think it was a Google research group talking about the personal space thing? <laughs> I, I don't know, I heard about like the invisible bubble yeah, the invisible, that people the, recommend. The personal yeah. space bubble that appears when you step away from like a, like the po the virtual poker table with everybody. Because I guess people like in these social games will we'll just like, I'm like, yeah. You know, and you're just like, oh, there's somebody there because you're into it, right? Yeah. And, and it just like freaks people <laughs> out. And, and the biggest one that I've played around with is Altspace VR, and you can go onto that just on your desktop, or like it has like a bunch of different platforms you can go on. And um, yeah, they they've been trying to work on that, and uh, they have like a personal bubble. I think that they started <laughs> doing, but there's like these creepy like gifs online where they started to like make it so that the eyes move. I don't Ooh. know how they do it, but like so that like there's like this one I have in my talk where the guy like leans forward and you can see his eyes moving around. It's just like, there's so much potential for creepiness, but also like, you know, it's interesting, like you don't have this sort of understanding of who you're in the room with, for example. And so people will do stuff and say stuff that they, you know, might not if they realize there was like a 18 year old girl next to them, but they actually aren't thinking that that's who's next to them. So <laughs> I think there's like interesting things that will be kind of pushed to a head in terms of like, involve, like evolving design and, and, and standards for like community nurturing and stuff. And I think that's really exciting too. Well, we've developed it over these years of being able to text and, and chat right. room each other, and that's been an ongoing thing as we mm -hmm. new yeah. ways to be both good and bad yes. as human nature. So, um, I think the numbers are staggering. Uh, the prediction for uh, the gear this year is like $3 billion worldwide. Um, and is that for capturing and and I, I think that's, that's mostly on the, on the actually the, the, the headset. Um, and not necessarily in the capturing uh, within that number. And they're predicting 183% growth year over year to 2020 with this. Um, so it's definitely, we're at the, the start of a high growth rate. Yeah. Believe it or not, there's a study going on in, at Columbia University where they're studying how um, when you're telling a story using this thing, uh, where, does, uh, where does empathy start? And where does it get too intense to where you're no longer empathetic, you're terrified. Uh, Tra being traumatized. Traumatized, yeah. shocked. So they're actually studying this, which will, I think, you know, guide really storytellers going, right. going forward. And we're talking about with that, because there's a certain point where there's acting and a camera and something like this, mm -hmm. right? And you're in the doctor's office with the, the girl that, that's about to have the abortion. And then you get, they, they flash back to them driving up to it and somebody leans in the window is talking to me and you see the lineup, then it goes to CG. They made a conscious choice to go to CG in this right. when you got to the protesters, because um, they felt it would be too intense. Right. And they felt it would, um, would turn you off yeah. um, instead of showing you what, what it's like for that yeah. person um, to go through that. Uh, I think, you know, as you're looking at this, the better you can tell stories, the more immersive you can tell stories, the more actions you can have from that, be it empathy, be it experience, or in Charity Waters' case, which we've discussed uh, previously, they actually used it and raised uh, twice the amount of money they would normally raise at their gala by showing a 360 video yeah. of, uh, of a young girl uh, going to get water. And for context, it, it, it wasn't just we put this out and you can get it on your phone and whatever, people found it, so I gave money. Like they were at a gala that, that you know, the, the donors that have the money, you know, the big money mm -hmm. we're at. They would, they would have raised money no matter what. Yeah. But after showing this video, the showing the 360 video of, of that experience, they raised double. Um, yeah. And that makes perfect sense mm -hmm. in a way, but yeah. Awesome. So, well, yeah, we have no time. We have no time. <laughs> we have no time. So, uh, so we'll, we'll kind of roll out here. Uh, but uh, we have these. If anybody wants to try any of them out out here afterwards or in the lobby or anything, uh, we'll have them. We have Definitely a couple things to do. Definitely play Suicide Squad. Definitely play Suicide Squad. Yeah. It was. <laughs> We're having a blast with that. So, uh, uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, and uh, and uh, go, go try some of the stuff out for sure. You know, to, uh, get a cardboard. Uh, check out the apps, check out some of the 360 videos, even on YouTube, just look for 360 on YouTube. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of really cool examples. And bring your own ideas. And bring your own yeah. ideas, yeah. Yes, I, if, you, if, if you have any ideas, you know, tell her as a developer. We got <laughs> we got a couple of cameras we're playing with. We, I'm just like, like we're in the Slack, like tell me what can I do with this thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Like just give me ideas and, and we're, we have a couple of things on the list. So, all right, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>